welcome back to everyone. Hello, my name is Adam Smith, and today we continue the Kickstarter preview series for Earth Under Siege from Dark Horizon Games. If you want to know more about this one, the crowdfunding campaign is wrapped up, but the pledge manager is open, and this series aims to show you exactly how this game operates and plays. If you didn't check out my setup video, which I released prior, I'll put a link to that in the top right-hand corner. Without further ado, let's dive right into the mission briefing to find out what this mission entails. We'll talk about the mission objectives and of course how things could potentially go south on me. Okay, settle down. I know Dr. Rebus has been playing around in your brains, but I don't need to hear all about your enhanced senses, amazing abilities, or your horrid visions of a monstrous entity that's trying to claw its way into your mind. Blah, blah, blah. Save it for the shrinks. We've got a job to do. Some of the intel you dug up showed some interesting stuff. One tidbit that has the brass all excited is the location of a power source that appears to be designed for a massive new portal the enemy plans on using against us. If we take this out, it should set them back while they figure out how to power up their little toy and it will also give us a chance to locate this new portal and take it out before it ever becomes operational. We're going to outfit your team with what we call the Devastator which is the most powerful portable explosive device we have in our arsenal. We need you to plant that in the enemy warehouse near the energy source and detonate it. I don't need to tell you that you shouldn't be anywhere near the device when it goes off. If you were Bravo team, I'd need to tell you, but you aren't, so I won't. Speaking of your friends in Bravo, they're tasked with securing your exit. They will be operating outside the facility to make sure you're able to make a quick getaway once things hit the fan. Hopefully this will keep them far from the action so they don't fill our triage unit to capacity again. We've had you on training wheels up to this point by limiting your strategic approach through missions one to three, but you've proven your worth and the brass thinks you're ready to start planning your own missions, so don't mess it up. And as I mentioned in the setup video, when you pick your strategy going into the missions, once things start to open up here in mission number four, we have a choice as to how we go about it. We can do black ops, we can do espionage, we can breach and clear. As you saw in my prior video, we're going with espionage as you can see right here. Now our team's insertion point is going to be right here in the bottom right hand corner where all three of the operatives had landed. While our mission objective marked with the question mark here in the bottom left hand corner of the warehouse is to place the devastator which is right here on Kyle in this location and detonate it. That is mandatory to succeed at the mission. So how does the mission end up in failure? Well, if all operatives on the board are downed and all mandatory objectives, like detonating that particular objective, have not been completed, that is a failure of the mission. Also, if players would need to draw a threat card and the threat card deck is empty, that's also a failure. And finally, if the players cannot spawn a full unit of enemies when they would need to do so, that is another way to fail. So without further ado, let's begin our very first round of play, which starts off in the refresh phase, but this is completely skipped on the first round. We'll wrap back around in the second round and talk about it. So we move right along to the operative phase, and during this phase, players perform actions with their operatives under their control, and operatives can take a number of actions per round up to the number of action tokens in their available area on their dashboard. So each of these operatives have six available. We have three order tokens and three movement tokens. You can see examples of those way up there in the top right hand corner for Olivia. So we could use all of them if we wish, but there is reasoning behind not exhausting yourself. In other words, not taking so many actions that you don't have much to recover cover during the refresh phase, which you'll see as we skipped over when we hit to the second round, you'll see why waiting and holding on to some actions is worthwhile because you're going to want to push in certain time frame windows and essentially kind of toe the line or hold the line in others. And it's a strategic balance of how much do you want to accomplish in a round versus how much you want to be completely exhausted of actions going into the next round. So that's something to always be aware of, but there's a number of things that the operatives can do inside this phase. Examples of some of the actions that you can take is a standard move, you can do a careful move, you can do orders like acting, attacking, discovering, overwatch, picking things up, planning things, reviving teammates, sabotaging things, searching, trading, and reorganizing. There's a whole bunch of options before you. Just before I go ahead with my very first action of this round for the operatives, I want to touch on a couple major elements of this mission. The first one is the laser security grid, which you can see here in the bottom left hand corner. Now, stepping on this tile is going to trigger the alarm. This is something that you want to avoid doing. The alarm can trigger in a number of different ways, but long story short, you want to avoid that for as long as possible because things really escalate and your chance of success start to dwindle the second that thing is triggered. One way to handle the laser security grid is to sabotage it with the security scanner, which is in the space beside it. You have to use science to do so, but this is definitely an effective way of dealing with it. 
Now, if you sabotage it in this way, it's disabled until the end of the round. You can also sabotage the junction box, which you can find right here inside of this room, making it very appealing. Let's shift our focus to timed explosives, and the timed explosive in this mission is the Devastator token, which is this bomb that I have on Kyle currently, and I need to get it to this objective token way in the back of a warehouse. When I do, and I place it in this zone, I'm gonna place two damage tokens in the same zone, and during the cleanup step of the overall game round, I'm gonna remove one of the damage tokens, and that's going to act as a counter as it ticks down before the bomb explodes. Now what's even more wild is that when this thing detonates and explodes, it's going to then trigger the alarm. Any operatives in the same zone are going to be of course down, so you want to plant this thing and get away from it before the timer runs out. And all other figures would be killed in this space as well. Something else that happens is that figures and objects in adjacent zones, and adjacency in this game is only orthogonal, so never diagonal, are going to suffer 3 damage. So that is going to have 3 damage heading this way, and 3 damage heading this way, and when it heads this way, it's actually going to Going to interact with those canisters or explosive barrels and if they suffer any amount of damage they explode dealing two damage to figures in their zone and one damage to figures in adjacent zones they also create noise checks and because they are one by one by one side by side by side they're all going to implode causing a massive explosion inside of that warehouse the final thing I want to touch on is the alarm. When the alarm does get triggered, we're going to flip over spawn point one. So this one is going to become inactive when the alarm goes off. As of right now, the three spawns that are available are one, two, and then one way up in the top right hand corner, three. All right, so now that you have the gist of what's going on inside this mission, we definitely want to try and knock down these lasers so we can get past to get towards where the warehouse is. And there's two ways we can do it, as I discussed. We can go for the hand scanner, or we can sabotage over here. We can go either route, and it would make it available for a full round. So what I'm going to do is head towards this room right here, which does have a lot of traffic, and you're going to wonder, what are these blips all over the map? These are indicated positions of the enemy, although they're unknown to us what they are until we have visible line of sight to the token, and then those things are going to spawn. And that will be part of the magic of the game, is that things are going to appear, and there's also other blips that are yellow, which are called patrols. Those ones are going to move toward designated spaces, and you'll see how that works as we go along. So it's worth mentioning that just before I take my very first action that I can literally bounce between any operative and take any actions in any order, which really opens up the strategy of what I can do on a given turn. Once I activate a particular individual, it's not like I have to resolve all their actions in one go. So I can do something with Olivia first, then something with Kyle, then back to Olivia, then over to Marissa. And that really allows for a lot of strategy around what's possible in a given operative phase. Taking an action is as simple as moving that token, which I want to do, in this case move, to the exhausted area. And when you move, you automatically gain two movement, and if you pass through any doors, you get to open one of them for free. However, just before I go ahead and do this, I want to take advantage of an overwatch action. This is something that as long as you're not able to draw line of sight to an enemy, as an operative, you can choose to go into overwatch, which means this token on the player board can be flipped over to its opposite side, meaning you're ready for whatever is coming your way as you crack open a door or when an enemy kind of walks into your path. It essentially is very much like being a sniper, kind of lying in wait. So Olivia's done this. I'm going to have Marissa do this as well and Kyle. Now I've already gone ahead and spent the one movement which gave Olivia two movements and the ability to open up a door. So she's going to go ahead and crack this door open. The second that that happens, line of sight can be drawn down the corridor to the north to that green blip and then we have to draw a card from the spawn deck. The door cracks open and the spawn card we got off the green deck ends up being an initiative one. We take a look at our initiative row for our enemies we set up during the setup video and that is going to be grunts for us which is the top one here. So if we take a look at that row on the actual grunts card it says to spawn two and I'll show you that in a moment but this right here says to reinforce the unit and spawn an additional grunt so three will be showing up at the green blip. So as I just mentioned, the one on the green card we just flipped relates back to the row of enemies we have in the one position. We have the grunts, and you'll see it says spawn two, plus the one from the ability on the spawn card itself, so that is what makes up the three. 
So because these enemies came in and they are unaware of our presence currently, they're just standing in the hallway. But at this exact moment, we have to make a decision as to whether or not we're going to do a stealth check or not. And if we choose not to do one, we automatically fail it and they will become aware of our presence. If we pass the stealth check, it allows us to stay hidden. I've chosen to fail the stealth check by not even rolling it, and so because of this, we take the green blip away because they're now aware, and the surprise token is placed in their space. Now this is what's awesome about going into Overwatch because by being in Overwatch, I'm able to then react to these enemies showing up here and the fact that I'm A-OK -okay with them being aware of my presence as I plan to attack them. So the only way you're going to lose the Overwatch token in terms of its active side is a couple known ways that you can lose Overwatch is if you choose to move or if you are stunned. There are likely other ways to lose it within the gameplay as well, but as of right now, it basically is a free act that you can not only do inside of this phase when you're doing your actions, but also you can potentially do outside of this phase. So it's one of those ones that's really good to get yourself into positional advantages to then get this token activated so you can react to some surprises as they come to you. So flipping that Overwatch token over, we now get to make a free attack. And as you can clearly see, I've already gone ahead and pulled the phase rifle out quite a bit ago from Olivia in order to show it to you up close. As we go through the gameplay, you'll get more familiar with the guns and I won't be showing them up close every time, but I want to show you how the dice pool is created. The first thing we do when making an attack is choose an equipped weapon. So I've got the phase rifle here. You'll see in the roll of icons, we have an attack symbol and then a red die. So there is the red die. Next up is range one to four. We also denote how much with the blood drops damage we're actually doing to the enemy. And then the noise in yellow is at the end with the speaker. It also has the ability to stun as well. The special is that it ignores cover. So this actual card is really handy. The reason being that shooting through a door right now would actually normally provide cover to the enemy, which makes it that much harder for them to be hit. But this weapon ignores it. Now, Olivia also has an ability because she's a squad member and it states right here, attacks with a Zethan weapon gain one red die. So she'll get another die here. And on top of that, it also deals an additional damage or wound. Now also on the character itself, it has stats laid out right next to the artwork. You'll see for the attack symbol at the very top, two white dice. So those are being added into the pool as well. Another way to increase your dice pool, which is very handy, is taking a look at your focus tokens. If you want to discard one, you can, and if you do, it gives you a white die to the pool. Now, if your icon on the focus token matches the actual check that you're doing in terms of its type. So if it actually is a focus token that has this attack symbol on it, then instead of a white, you'd actually gain a red, which definitely increases your chances. So it's good to get those synced up to get the most out of discarding tokens. But for Olivia, she really focuses on science, being a science officer, so that's what I have. There's also nothing stopping you from discarding more of these, so long as you have them to gain more dice. And you can have up to three focus tokens in this area in general. Now, even though the phase rifle here has a special that ignores cover, it's worth mentioning here our condition card says that enemies that are in cover gain an additional one on the defensive. So their defensive value for the grunts, which is up on their initiative card, is four. So it will be a five. That still happens even though my phase rifle ignores cover. These enemies are in cover, technically still. It doesn't stop them from being in cover. It just means that the advantage that cover would provide them is not going to impact my my dice roll. So their defense still goes up by one. It's going to be five that we're looking to hit in order to inflict some damage. So let's go ahead and make our roll with our dice pool and see if we can get the five we need to put damage on these grunts. Oh yeah, we got it just barely. Five right on the dot. So Olivia's attack only impacts one of the grunt miniatures because it's not an AOE attack. If it was an AOE attack, which would be depicted on the weapon itself, then it would hit for the damage allotment, which in this case would be the plus one here and the one off the gun, which would be two, to each unit in the space. But because we're just doing a regular attack with the phase rifle and it does not have AOE, then it's only one of that unit that gets killed off because we did two wounds and each grunt is one health. So one of them's been killed off. We still have two left to deal with, but this was a free attack thanks to that Overwatch token. So we have other Overwatch tokens we can potentially use right now. 
Now, Kyle, who is not in shot right now, has a weapon, a ranged weapon, but it only goes zero to two. So it is not going to be able to reach three spaces away. But Marissa does have a silenced rifle, which can go up to three away. So at this point, we are going to go ahead and make an attack using her with her Overwatch token. For my Overwatch action, doing an attack here, I'm gonna go ahead and also exhaust this silenced rifle. So not only am I getting the one white die off of it, but by exhausting it, as it states by the ranged attack, it says exhaust and you gain a black die. So we're gonna add a black die into the fray. What does a black die do? Well, when you roll it, you could land one of the sides that provides you with a focus token, which is always a good thing. So we're adding that into the fray. I've also exhausted my armor piercing rounds here, which allow me to gain a red die. And then I have three white, that come from using an attack action normally. I'm not going to choose to discard, even though this would be pretty good, to discard one of these to get another red die because it matches a symbol I'm using. I'll hold on to those for later. I think what I have for dice here should be able to hit that five threshold. Well, here's hoping that this Overwatch attack pans out for me. That would be two for two. I need to land at least five here. Let's see how we do. All right, we got it. We got six and we actually gained a focus token. Not bad, not bad at all. We're down to just one more grunt in that location. Marissa's gonna continue her shots from distance. She's gonna use a token right here into the exhausted area. I do have cards. I could be playing tactics cards in order to boost things for Marissa, but as of right now, I'm gonna hold on to them because I think I might be able to make better use of them in a second here. But what we're gonna do is get one die here for my gun. You always get this even if it's exhausted to its side. The only thing that exhausted means is that you don't get the black die with this particular rifle. Also, I can't use this again because it's exhausted, so I don't get a red off. Off that so just the white for the gun the red is coming from burning a focus token that matches what i'm doing for an attack so that token's gone gives me a red and then of course these three from the stat right there i think this is a decent roll i should be able to pull off another hit and clear the unit i hope and you know what, just before I go ahead and make the roll, let's go ahead and discard the focus token that I gained just moments ago in order to add another white one in because again, it doesn't match what we're doing, but that's still gonna increase my dice pool. Whites are pretty risky. There's a lot of blanks on them. So getting an extra one could be handy to see if that might get me over the five that I need to succeed. So here we go. Hoping I get a good result of red because that'll really help me. Here we go. Oh yeah, easy, easy. All right, so I retroactively have to do something in order to correct what I did around cover. So Olivia was bang on. Her gun was able to ignore cover. Everything was fine there. She took out one of the grunts, no problem. Then I had Marissa go ahead and make two back-to-back -back attacks. The first attack that she did was actually one shy from being at the level needed to kill off the grunts because her gun does not ignore cover. So the enemy gains cover as we're shooting through a doorway towards the hallway where the enemies were. So they have as a base four plus one from the fortified defenses, which is five plus two from cover makes it seven. And I rolled a six on that first attack. So I'm going to have to go ahead and re-roll a die in order to make this work. So I'll do that in a moment. The second attack that Marissa made was an eight. So that was far away enough to kill that third grunt. So we really just have to re-roll for that second one that Mar or that first one, I should say, that Marissa did. So to clear things up, we're gonna go ahead and discard a tactics card from Marissa in order to make a reroll of the one blank white die that uh, did not land anything useful. I got a six on that roll and I'm looking for seven. So here we go, give me one. There we go, we got what we needed. This card is now discarded into the discard pile for the tactics cards for Marissa. So just so you're aware, when an operative gains a reroll within the game, it means they can reroll any number of dice in their pool for the check they just made. And operatives may use multiple rerolls on the same check if able. So I can continue doing this by burning through my tactics cards if I didn't land that. But I did, so we're A-OK. -okay. And I'm glad I retroactively corrected that because cover really does have an impact on how hard it is to kill off enemies. When you take out an entire unit of enemies, you get to draw from the Valor Bag. And this is gonna give you a token you can place in the team valor pool let's find out what we get randomly from the bag pulling one out we have this right here this Valor reward is actually really good. It's Zethian gear. So the operative gets to draw a card from the Zethian gear deck and we can give it to any operative we have. We ended up getting a black hole grenade. This thing looks pretty awesome. And in order to actually use it, we first, now that we've found it, have to discover this. And I'd like to place this on Olivia, the science officer. She likely has the best chances of doing so. When an operative gains a Zethan gear card, it is placed into the undiscovered slot on the dashboard. You can have up to three 
in this area and there's also a backpack option there to the left for other blue item types that you've seen around the game board. In order to discover this as it's currently undiscovered, you have to make a science check. Now on the card at the very bottom of it, it has a numerical value. In this case, it's two. So when you do the science check, we need to either meet or succeed it. We can do a discover check as one of our actions from our operative, even during the phase we're currently in. For now, I'm gonna hold off. We're gonna continue with Olivia and she's gonna head towards the door here. So we're gonna use another movement action, giving her two movement and a free opening of a door. She turns the corner, opens the door, and ends up getting an initiative three spawn card, which ends up being spotter drones, which are on the bottom here. It says preemptive damage, but there's an icon of an alarm symbol. So this only triggers if the alarm was triggered, which it isn't right now, so we ignore it. So we have two spotter drones showing up inside of that room, and I'm gonna choose not to do another stealth check, which is gonna make them instantly surprised. Now it's worth mentioning too, that these things not only know that I'm there now, but also the one around the corner, because it is adjacent to a unit that is surprised, is also gonna become surprised. However, I don't draw a spawn card for that green blip because I can't draw a line of sight to it, so we still don't know what it is yet. All right, we got some work to do, so let's go ahead and get Kyle moving here. I'm gonna have him use two of his action points here, two of these to move going down to his exhaust area. That's gonna generate him four movement, which can get him all the way into the same space as the spotter drones. Now, the reason why this is awesome is because Kyle has the wet work blade, which is a melee weapon, which I can certainly use to my advantage inside of this room. Now, the second he walks in here, we automatically are then going to spawn the green blip below because they now have line of sight to an operative. In this case, it's going to be initiative two, which is going to be a heavy down in that location. And it's going to be one heavy based on the initiative card. Now, the worst part about this situation is that the heavy is not only nasty and comes in with a very solid shield and you cannot reroll against it, which makes it fun to deal with. It also is coming in with an armor token, thanks to that green spawn card, which is going to, unfortunately, as it states right here, armor tokens negate two points of damage instead of one. So he's gotten that much tougher to put down. So Kyle is getting ready to make an attack, but just before I do, something I want to change that doesn't impact gameplay whatsoever, but is worth mentioning. The Overwatch token I didn't use for Kyle is gone because when Kyle moved out of the insertion point and started moving, this token then gets disabled and I wasn't able to make any shots because this weapon was not within range to be able to help out in that capacity anyway, so no harm there. It's inactive right now, nothing impacting gameplay, but right now we're going to go ahead and we moved an order token down here to exhaust to make an attack attack. Kyle's going to wield his blade. I'm going to turn it sideways to exhaust it for a black die, two white dice from the card, three for the stat. And it's also worth mentioning here, once per round, we can make a melee attack that gains cleave, which we can do by expending another one of these, which I'm going to do right now. This is going to allow me to do an area of effect attack for melee that can hit both of the drones at the exact same time. So we might as well make this attack count. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard a focus token and that's gonna give me the ability to go up to six white dice. Now it's worth mentioning that for dice limits, six is the most white you can have in a roll, three in terms of red and three in terms of black. Now, for those curious as to why I brought Kyle all the way into the fray to attack with a sword, it's strategic because Marissa currently has a weapon equipped that is range one to three and Olivia's is range one to four. So I would have to do movement through the space where the enemies are, which is kind of fun and awkward, and also have to deal with potentially sitting outside the room, shooting through cover of the doorway, which then again gets boosted up by effects inside the game and increases the defensive values of the initial of cards so in order to avoid that i'm having kyle go straight into the same space and just start ripping things to shreds with his swords where the cover does not come into play so looking at the spotter drones initiative card the defense value is four and they have abilities for defense but none of them apply to this attack or have any conditions that will negatively affect me during this attack i'm going in making a melee aoe attack so this should be really good i just need to land four or higher and i can wipe out both of these drones in one attack so let's see how this goes we're gonna roll a whole bunch of dice one, two, three, four, five, six. That is gonna be more than enough. And on top of it, we also gained a focus token. 
All right, so Kyle was able to thoroughly destroy all the drones in that area. I also got rid of the blips because, of course, once they're aware with the surprise tokens, the blips disappear, so they've been removed as well. We also get a Valor token, so going inside the draw bag right now to find out what we get. We still have that heavy in there to deal with, so we hopefully have enough actions here, maybe with Marissa to come in and do some harm. We actually pulled a very similar token to what we had prior, so we have another one that allow us to get one of those special weapons. This looks like a really cool upgrade. So it says the hollow targeting system is an upgrade to any ranged weapon. It has a special, so attacks with this weapon now gain two white dice plus an addition on range. I've gone ahead and given that to the undiscovered slot of Olivia as well. Something else I think will really go well with her current weapon to bolster it up. Now we currently have a heavy still in this area that I really want to deal with. And this heavy has health that's equal to the number of operatives plus one. So this is a four health enemy, the strongest we've seen yet. So Marissa still has tokens to spend from her available area here, and it's worth mentioning that in the refresh phase, you always get three back. So that is the balance you have to think about. If you use three, you can always get those three back. Once you use more than three, you're starting to overexert yourself for coming round. So it's not just kind of a gigantic pool of availability that you can just burn all the time. You're not going to get all them back, and it's going to make things a little tougher in future rounds. So you got to be really strategic with when you use them. But for me right now, I'm going to go ahead and use two in order to generate a whole bunch of movement to get Marissa right into the same room as that heavy and then we're going to make an attack using another one. Marissa is currently at the insertion point and is going to end up in the same location as Kyle. From here we're going to try and inflict a whole bunch of pain on this heavy. I'm going to go ahead and use this support token so each operative may gain either two wild focus tokens or draw two cards. We're going to flip this over. I'm going to be gaining two focus tokens for Marissa, two focus tokens for Olivia, and then one for Kyle because Kyle is a squad member and even though he already has two focus tokens, he can't gain any cards because he doesn't have a tactics deck. But that's still pretty good usage of that support token. So for Marissa, I decided to boost up with a bunch of attack-based ones, same thing with Kyle, and then overall with Olivia, I decided to focus on science as she has a bunch of undiscovered things to discover. So for Marissa's attack, I've already spent the order token. The gun is going to give me one white die. This focus token, because it matches what we're doing, is going to give me a red die. Three of these white dice coming from the stat, and then taking a look at this card, a tactics card in hand, says play before making an attack to gain a red die. So we're going to go ahead and add a red. If it's an AoE attack, we get two instead. It's not, so we don't get it. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend a focus token in order to boost this up so that it actually does two damage total if we get through. The defense of this unit, this heavy, is four. It's not in cover, so it doesn't get any extra benefits that way, uh, thankfully. And the only thing we have to deal with is the armor, which is uh, rate at two. So basically, if I can get this hit to land, we can destroy the armor off this thing. All right, here's hoping we can land this hit against the heavy. We just need to get four. That's all we need, four more, and we've knocked off the armor token. So here we go. Oh yeah, we got that no problem. The armor token is gone. Now the reason that matters so much is because with that gone, we can now actually put wounds against the heavy that are gonna go against its overall total. The heavy is based on the number of operatives in play, so three plus one. So four health now we need to hit in terms of wounds to kill this thing off. Now, Olivia has an undiscovered, pretty cool item called the Black Hole Grenade, which I think we should try and discover. So I'm going to have Olivia try and discover this undiscovered card that we gained earlier, and I get four white just from making this science check. The check we need to land is two, so we probably have it just in the white dice, but just to be sure, we're going to use a focus token that is a science as well. That's going to give us a red die because it matches the check that we're doing, so that's awesome. we got to roll and hit the two. If we do, we now have a black hole gr grenade in our inventory for Olivia, which is pretty powerful and might be really handy against the heavy here. So we got ourselves one, two, three, four, five. That is enough. We've discovered the black hole grenade. Now we can actually equip this. Now, of course, it's worth mentioning I should have actually spent an order token in order to do that discovery. So now we've caught up with that. You also get a Valor token when you discover something, and you also get it for other things within gameplay, like sabotaging stuff, for instance. In this case, we got one that allows us to heal an Operative 1. We'll hold on to that for now in our Team Valor pool. 
Now the thing to think about here, and the reason I went ahead and discovered that black hole grenade is I was thinking that I might use it, but the downside of the black hole grenade when it gets thrown, wherever it gets thrown, and you can choose a space one to two away, and then things around that space get sucked towards it, and then it explodes, but then it causes noise at two. And noise at two, depending on which area the grenade lands in, that you throw it in, it could, because other blips within the game can actually hear the noise, and and could actually turn to a patrol. And at that point, they become more aggressive. They start moving towards things and trying to hunt me down, which is not exactly something I really want to have happen yet. Also, I don't really want to leave a heavy alive that's in a surprise state as he will trigger the alarm. So we may need to push really hard, even though this is not the normal strategy that I would take in this case. But I think Olivia might have what she needs to be able to put enough damage to kill this heavy unit if everything works out and if not we'll have to stress out Kyle and Marissa to help out. The key reason we want to take down that heavy is to avoid the alarm triggering because once that triggers well time is against us and things get progressively tougher. So Olivia is going to use her movement here in order to get from this space into this space, allowing her to go ahead and make a shot using her phase rifle. She'll need to use an action, an order token in order to pull this off. She gets a red one from this. She gets a red one here from this ability, two white from up here, and she's going to spend one of her science focus tokens to get another white. So let's go ahead and roll the dice. So we need to hit a four or higher in order to make this hit, and Olivia gets an extra plus one wound thanks to her ability. So two going against the heavy if we can land four or more. Let's see how we do. Oh yeah, we got it. And those red dice really helped out. So that's going to be two wounds going against the heavy. And we're going to do the exact same thing with another attack. I'm also going to go ahead and burn my last focus to bring another die into the equation. So it'll literally be the exact same roll. I'm also going ahead and spending the order token, the last one that I have for Olivia, in order to pull this roll off. Let's go ahead and roll and see if we get the four or more that we need. You'll see the two wounds already on the heavy. We just need two more to kill it and... We got it. Thanks to this red one right here that tipped us over, we got what we need. That heavy has been killed off. So that worked out really well. We cleared up all the enemies and we achieved a lot in this very first round. And I can tell you right now, as a strategy, it's not normal. And it's usually quite risky to try and push as hard as I did just now, especially with Olivia using up all of her action tokens. We have Marissa and Kyle down to just two available each. We pulled off a lot of kills and cleared up a lot of stuff, but our team is quite tired. Because we took down the heavy, we are going to go ahead and pull another Valor token from the bag. Also worth mentioning, you always check for noise as well with the gun that you use. In this case, it was just one, so nothing to resolve in that situation. No one hurt us. We got ourselves a reroll. That's good. We now move into the enemy phase. During the enemy phase, enemies will move and activate depending on their state, whether they're aware or unaware. The enemy phase ends after all applicable enemies have moved and or activated. The very first thing is the alarm check step, and you skip this if the alarm has been triggered. In this case, we're going to check to see if there are any aware enemies. Well, there aren't because every single one of them that was aware, based on all those surprise tokens, were all killed off. If any surprise tokens are currently in play, as these ones are after we've gone ahead and cleared out each of those areas, we're going to go ahead and flip them to the investigate side. If the alarm has not been triggered, you're going to move every patrol and every elite on the game board one at a time, two zones towards its target, and there is a way to determine the target. In this particular mission, currently, we only have one patrol, which is yellow. So you can see why noise is really important, because if you make too much noise from too great a distance, these green tokens will flip in the stages earlier to yellow, and then they become patrols. And at that point, they start moving. And once they start moving, the default to go towards the nearest investigate token. They move two every time that they activate, and in this case there's only the one, so it's rounding the corner of the corridor, heading towards all the investigate tokens where our heroes currently are. And if there's no investigate markers on the game board, then it's going to aim to head towards the insertion point. Now what is the overall aim of these patrols moving towards the investigate tokens? Well, once they reach the investigate tokens, they gobble them up, and then those investigate tokens get placed on the escalation track. And as you can see, way up in the top left-hand corner of the game board, if the patrols start gobbling up those investigate green tokens and place them here on the escalation track, at certain points things will happen. Those yellow patrols mean to add a patrol to the spawn pool to the left, which 
which means you're going to have more patrols coming out as time goes on. And then if it hits the red one, it's going to add an elite patrol to the spawn pool, which is also really bad. And then, of course, the worst thing that can happen is it escalates so much that it triggers the alarm. And at that point, your time is extremely limited and things are getting extremely tough. During the enemy phase, after you do the alarm check, you then do a portal check, but that's something that doesn't apply in this case right now because we don't have any portals currently in play. So I hopped right over that to the enemy movement where we move the patrols. And now the final thing to do is to activate any enemies that are aware that are still currently in play. And you do this in initiative order, but in this case, there are no other enemies that are aware, so we skip past this and we head into the escalation phase. In the escalation phase, if the alarm is triggered, which it isn't right now, we add an elite patrol to the spawn pool right now. And then the next thing we check is the spawn step. We spawn each blip in the spawn pool, starting with elites. And so we don't have any, thankfully, because things haven't gotten that bad yet, so we're okay there. And the final thing is the cleanup step, so any ongoing effects will end at this point. And usually those can come from, for example, some of the tactics cards that some of the uh, operatives can play that will actually be an effect for a given round or maybe another game effect that's only good for the round. And then those basically are discarded or close off. So we've completed an entire round of Earth Under Siege. You've seen the entirety of what a round has. However, you haven't seen every facet of it because, well, we didn't trigger the alarm. There's no aware enemies sitting out in play that needed to have any kind of nasty effects ongoing. We didn't have anything major happen on the escalation track, but believe me, if those things happen, things start to really get pretty tight. So we did a pretty good job in that first round of pushing extremely hard and clearing things out to really give us a leg up on this mission. Now we begin the next round in the refresh phase and we skipped over this and you do skip over it the first round you play but now we're going to actually do it and the first step is to refresh exhausted cards and recover three action tokens for each operative of your choosing just like that marissa is all squared away we now need to decide which action tokens to bring back for kyle kyle is now all set and last olivia Olivia really needs the token refresh as he has literally none currently. At this point, we now draw cards up. So any operative that is being fully controlled and has a tactics deck can discard one card if they choose to. I currently have three on Marissa. We'll take a look at them and see if I want to discard one. And then we draw up to our hand size of five. Taking a look at my hand, I have some pretty good cards. I really want to keep these heavy fire cards because it can make a ranged attack gaining AOE, which we know can hit multiple individuals inside the same space. That that we definitely want to hold on to. Second wind, I think I'm going to let it go because we don't really need it right now. And something else that needs to be refreshed, of course, is a support token. Don't forget about that. Just so you can see, here is my current hand of cards going into the next round. Next, we draw and resolve a threat card. And we didn't do this during the very first round because the whole refresh phase was skipped. This is coming from the blue deck that we set up in the top right hand corner. And we only focus on the top section because the alarm hasn't triggered. Otherwise, we'd be resolving the bottom portion. Here it says each operative with any damage or negative condition suffers a wound. Not good, but it's A-OK -okay for our current operatives. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up part number one for Earth Under Siege. There is a major thing that I need to mention here that is a massive facet of this game, and that is the security cameras. There are security cameras here in this mission in three different locations. They're checking out all of these corridors, and as you can see, this one leads all the way to this one right here, right in front of where all of our team moved out from the insertion point. So if I had been playing this and hadn't forgotten, I would have immediately done a stealth check in that location to to assure that the camera would not have picked me up. Now, that's the way in which you can kind of gamble that the camera won't pick you up. And if it does, then this crew in here manning the cameras is going to trigger the alarm, which is going to jump and escalate things extremely fast. However, there's a more surefire way to avoid this. So as part of the espionage strategy card, you can see there in the bottom right, this gear card was given to Olivia. And this is something I could have used and should have used retroactively. So I do apologize for not using this at the time when I should have. But basically, I could have used this up to two spaces away. So even when I was sitting inside the insertion point, placed a token just outside in the corridor, which would have blocked the line of sight of the camera from seeing me. So I wouldn't have to do any kind of checks whatsoever on stealth to hope the cameras don't see 
see me. This would actually completely stop the camera from being able to see me, and that would be the way in which to avoid it when you're going down the espionage strategy trail. So in this case, can't retroactively go back, modify things to make that happen, but I wanna let you know I have the ability to get past those cameras with this. And on top of it, I also have Kyle who has the disguise on. So the disguise is gonna make anybody looking through cameras not raise a red flag whatsoever when they leave or move anywhere anyway. So there's that facet as well. So a couple different things you have at your disposal when playing the espionage strategy. This is just something I missed and it is worth mentioning because it's a huge aspect of how the alarm could potentially trigger early on. For now, that's gonna do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about what you've seen so far. And I can't wait to continue this mission to see whether or not we can pull it off. Thanks again. And as always, keep on rolling solo. Thank <laughs> you.